So this is a quick video um, within Revit 2020. This is in regards to a request by an end user about adding rooms and or spaces in a Revit project that has a domed roof. I have Revit 2020 open up. I've got a, a dummy project that I created with four walls in a rectangular fashion and two walls in a circular fashion with a dome. So I'm gonna start from scratch just to make sure you can see the procedure step by step. I'm going to head over to starting a new file. I'll use the architectural template file and click OK. And I'll adjust my project browser a little bit. And we'll start a new wall command. It doesn't really matter what kind of wall you want to work with. I'm going to create a rectangular one here. And then I'm going to create a circular one down here. I'm going to take the walls and make sure that they go up to the next level above. Because uh, right now they default to unconnected. So we'll switch it to level 2. And then we'll create a section through this so you can see both. I'm going to tile the views and so you can see both. And it doesn't matter if I use spaces or rooms, they function in the same manner. The difference is spaces tie back to HVC and um, analysis for energy and things like that. So if you're in the architecture tab, you can head over to the room and area panel and click the room <laughs> command. So I'm going to do that over here and put it in the square room. And then I'm going to place the, in the Analyze tab, the Space command. And I'm going to load the Space tag under Annotation Mechanical. That way you can see it. And I'm going to put it in the circular room. Now that I've done this, I'm going to open up Visibility Graphics dialog box. I type in VV. And I can scroll down to Rooms. I'll expand and turn on the interior fill and the reference. And the same thing with spaces. That way you can visually see it easier in plan. <clears throat> and you can see they're two different colors. And I'm going to head over to the section one and do the same approach. So it makes it easier for, to, for you to see what's happening. So let's start with uh, rooms and we'll hit uh, interior fill and reference. And then we'll do spaces as well. Now that we've done this, in the section view, we don't have the tags. And in the plan views, we do have the tags. I'm going to switch this over to volume and the space as well, switch it to one with volume. And it's going to say not computed by default. That's fine. Just head over to the area of volume computations and turn on volume comp computation. Now, I'm going to also take and head over to the section view and put in the tags as well. So I do a space tag. And I'll use the volume tool and place it. And then I will head over to the architecture tab and put in a room tag as well. And also use the volume. And I want to put in the volume one because I want you to see what's happening here. As it stands right now, both, both the room object and the space objects have a default height that go up to 10 feet above. So if I were to tab into the actual room object or the space object, you'll see it says limit offset is 10 feet. Let's switch over to level two, and I'll rename level two as roof. And once I've done this, I can go ahead and start introducing a roof. So let's go ahead and do the roof by footprint command. And we'll specify, say, an offset of a foot overhang. And we'll do this on the rectangular um, design and finish it. You'll see this one is a typical uh, hip style roof. For the circular one, we want to make a dome. So I'll do the roof by footprint again. And this time I'll just pick the two walls, finish it, and it gives me the dome. We need to adjust the view range. So I'm going to click edit and switch this to unlimited. Take this up to, I don't know, say 50 feet. And now you can see it looks like a roof plan. Back over here in the section, I'm going to adjust the limit so you can see what's happening. If I select my room object by tabbing, look and watch very carefully on the square footage, the, the volume calculations. As I go up, it increases. And if you look very carefully on the edges, it's noticing that the roof is considered a room bounding object and it knows to be contained within that area. 
And once I go past the limits of that root, that volume count doesn't change. You notice that? You see that? So it knows it's calculating the volume properly. Same thing with the space object here. Tabbing into the space object, I can pull up. And the minute I get past that roof, it knows to stop calculating. And it gives me my final volume uh, count. And so there really shouldn't be any reason why you can't take a room object or a space object and just place it inside your Revit model. Um, you may have to adjust the limits of the height like I did here so you can get the proper um, count for the volume. As for the area, if I go over to the architecture tab and I tag the room again, but this time I use the area tag, it gives me that area and the same thing with the space. If I head over to the analyze tab and click space tag, choosing the one that has the area will give you that area total. Now, the, val the um, value that you see for the square footage for room and spaces will not change if you tug on or pull or adjust the space vertically because it's not looking at the volume, it's looking at area. It's looking at length and width here and it's looking at the area of a circle here in plan view. So those values should not change. Hopefully this video will help you understand how to place a space or a room object and control its limits in Revit. Thanks for watching.